Hi everybody. Um, as I said last time, I am here with my mom for my next video. We, um, her name is Regina. For all of you watching, uh, we are going to talk about um, when my mom first found out that I had Tourette syndrome up until now. So I hope this is helpful for other parents out there watching, or even anybody else out there watching with a child with a certain disability or anything else. So, first question: When did you first notice that I ticked? I didn't really notice. Grandma noticed. She was watching you. We, your dad and I went somewhere and she was watching you and then we came home. She told me that you just wouldn't sit still the whole time you were there. She goes, I don't know if something was going on or if whatever, but you just wouldn't sit still. So on the way home, I had you sit in the front seat so I could kind of keep an eye on you. And so I was watching you. And your, your movements weren't fluid. They were jerky. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Oh. So I asked you if you knew what you were doing. And you really didn't know what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So when we got home, I had you in front of me. And I had your dad watching you, too. And we saw it again. So that's when I decided I need to figure out what's going on. So we went to urgent care. Who really couldn't do anything because it really wasn't a problem for them. Yeah. But luckily, we had a decent person who was on staff that day, and he called the neurologist and made the appointment for us so we could get in right away. Did you expect it to be Tourette's syndrome? I had a feeling that's what it was. Did you know about it? Before? I knew about it from a talk show. Oh, yeah. Because. A uh, certain talk show had kids on that had Tourette's, and I, back then I used to watch them, and it just kind of clicked with me. Makes sense. Um, do you remember how you felt after the neurologist said, like, that's what it was? Were you I, scared? Or I worried? wasn't scared. I had a feeling that's what it was. i am always been the type that that always tried to make things positive. It always could be worse. Yeah. You had Tourette's. It's something we could deal with. There was no bad things. There's no surgery involved or anything like that that we had to worry about. It was just something that you have and we have I had to do research to figure out how to help you and figure out for sure what it was besides just the talk show. Right. Um, how'd the rest of the family? Grandma cried, but I had to tell her it's okay. Could be worse. Your dad didn't want to know about it, and not that it was a bad thing. Right. He just, I think, in his head, if he knew about it, then it made it real, and he didn't want to ever see his kids have any issues. Mm -hmm. So it's so weird if he doesn't know about it, then it's not real, and he can move on. Um, everybody else was just concerned and was. Wanted to make sure you were okay and stuff, yeah. that it wasn't, but grandma was probably the worst. Did anybody say, like, that it made sense? Did they, like, notice or... No, most people would say, most people told me, I haven't seen her do anything. That's what they tell me now. Yeah, and it's like, well, you don't have to see it, just like right. with people who have fibromyalgia or depression, you don't always see it. Right. But you know you have it. Right. When I was a kid... You would watch some programs sometimes about Tourette's syndrome, but you wouldn't let me watch them with you. Why? I didn't know what they were going to say. Oh. I didn't want it to be where you watched it and it was something bad or something they were making fun of. or I never wanted you to think what you had was something bad. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted it always to be whatever. I have it. Whatever. It's no big deal. Right. I was afraid of some of the shows, because some of the shows were stupid, like mm -hmm. talk shows and stuff like that. I didn't want you to think that it was something abnormal, basically. Right. I think that's so, how, because that's how I feel now. Yeah. I'm sick. I don't even, I don't care. <laughs> For the most part, besides the uncomfortableness. Um, how did you, somebody asked, um, sent me a question, they want to know how you helped me cope with bad days. Oh, I really helped bad. you cope when yeah. they were really bad. Yeah. We did breathing exercises. 
you laid on my lap and I stroked your hair and had you breathe in very slowly and breathe out through your mouth. Um, we did lavender in your bedroom, which I helped you calm down. Warm baths sometimes just to, with oatmeal and lavender. You know, a lot of uh, nothing like medicine. I mean, if it was real bad at night when you were older, we had you take like you needed foam so you could sleep. But for the most part, I just tried to calm you down. Or we would have you do the puzzle, mm -hmm. or have you do word search or right. something like that to redirect your mind into something, and that helped sometimes too. Yeah, which I still do. I always have one on hand. Um, somebody also asked how you helped me accept it. Which I don't really, it was just kind of... I don't, I think the way you accept it is because we didn't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. We didn't say, we didn't, I don't know how to say it, we didn't uh, always talk about it. Yeah. I mean, luckily for us, we were blessed that yours isn't as bad as some people's mm -hmm. can be. So there's a big difference there. But we never said you couldn't do anything because you have it. Right. And we always uh, uh, encouraged you to talk about it and to do reports about it and to tell people about it and to not let it stop you. We right. never let it be a crutch. Right. It was I'm always for. yeah. It was always just you have days where it's really bad and we take care of those days, but for the rest of the time you're just a normal kid doing things. Do you think it's been more of a like a help rather than? A discouragement in my life? I think it's helped you. It's helped you, one, with your writing, because it gave you something to write. It gave you something you would write when you had bad times, too, because that helped redirect your mind. I think it, uh, some people might not think it's a good thing, but I think the OCD part of it helped you in school. Yeah. Because you were very organized, and you came home, you did what you had to do, and you were done, and even in college you had the online classes you did everything you had to do because that's the way your mind works right and I think that helped you but as far as your personality I think you're who you are because of who you are right you have, oh, because of you and dad. yeah you have your a lot of your dad in you and I think that's why you're who you are but I did do think it helped in some ways because most kids I've read I don't know for sure but most kids who have Tourette's have a hard time at school Right. You, I've read that too. You had, now I don't want to say an easy time, but your grades were good and you got your work done and stuff like that. You weren't distracted. Right. I want to say. Yeah. I was lucky yeah. with teachers in school. Um, do you think it's affected our relationship at all, like me and you or me and dad? Maybe you and dad in a little bit, but not me and you. Yes. I talked to you like this when you were a baby. Right telling you different things growing up I think your dad certain times can't handle like he doesn't watch your videos and not because he doesn't love you it's right. just it's too much for him to handle right and if you have, are having a bad day he gets very concerned and very worried so I think that's a little bit different right and we think since he doesn't watch his videos I'm saying <laughs> no we're pretty confident that I got it from Dad, aren't we? From his side. I don't know for sure, but... Dad and I have a lot of right, similar... Right, similar. Your dad has some OCD traits that mm -hmm. I've known, seen him through the years, and uh, at night he jerks around a lot when he's sleeping. I mean, you don't see it too much like you mm -hmm. during the day, but I've seen OCD tendencies in him. Right. I've seen him do stuff that he doesn't think other people right. see right. that I do. Right. Like mimicking stuff. Yeah, he does that a lot too. For the TV. Yeah. I do it all the time. And he's the only other person I've seen do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think for the most part, I believe it was probably his side of the family. I have never seen anybody else. Yeah. Last question. What advice would you give to parents out there struggling with it or just now finding out maybe that their child has Tourette's and they're worried? It, it's hard to say because like I said, we were lucky. We didn't have to deal with medications. And until I was older. Until you were older. But you were older. Right. And they have come a long way. 
that when you were younger, the medication, then you had to take another medication from this side effect and so on and so forth. Right. And we didn't have the vocal tics that we had to worry about. Um, but I would say, try not to make it a big deal. It's not, make it, it's just a personality trait. Like, I have curly hair. You know, yeah. it's just a personality. It's a thing in your DNA that you have. Um, if, if it can be controlled and they're not as bad, we never made a big deal about it. It was never, oh right. my goodness, or whispers or... Right, and nobody ever told me to stop. Right, ever. Which I think is do, big. Do what you need to do. Get it out. Well, one time, I made you go to a puzzle or something. Oh, Christmas. right. I remember. I needed to. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that very vividly. But other than that, we've never... we didn't make it a part of your life. Right. It wasn't my whole life. It wasn't your whole life. And I think that's what, you need to let your child be a child. Don't, if you are worried, and believe me, we were always worried, but don't let them see you worry. Yeah. Don't let them think that you're worried because this is a bad thing. Just if your kid's sick, you just, you take care of your kid or your child. That's what you do as a parent. And right. That's just, same way I would say it, it's for me like I said you weren't as bad so it wasn't as bad for me but I know other parents go through a lot worse than I than we had to go through and I would give them the same advice just go about your day if it's really bad try to help him or her relax relaxing always helps find them something to redirect their mind because that seemed to help a lot of yeah. the time being home with you right. helped me. Right. Just no. Just let them know you're there, and it's not anything to be ashamed of. Because yeah. it's not. Because nobody Make sure ever seems embarrassed of no. my ticks either. Make sure they always talk about it. Yeah. Let them talk about it. Have them do projects in school. That way, I think it helped you in school. Yeah. With your people you went to school with because you never had anybody make fun of you. No. Because you started, as soon as you were allowed to do reports, that's what you did reports on. Right. And we talked to every teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think it helped you immensely. Yeah. With your people you went to school with. Nobody, I never, you never came home saying anybody was making fun of you or you had a hard day because of, I mean, you had your days, but I mean, as far as teachers or other students making fun of you, that never happened. Right. And I think it's because you talked about it. And I think that's where a lot of it is, is they don't know what you're doing if you're yeah. ticking. So you want to talk. You want the students to know. Even if the parent goes in on a, can talk to the teacher and go in on a day to talk to the class about what their child has. Right. I thought it made, I felt less weird if people knew I had Tourette's. Right. Before they saw me doing something, rather than me kicking my feet or something, and then just think I was right. weird. Right. And your friends who were close to you knew what to do. Yeah, they were very, very helpful. Right. They were always. They were always there yeah. and let you know. Go talk to the teacher. You want me to talk to the teacher? Yeah. So I think that's that's part of it. Growing up in this day and age is awful, but I think. The part of that is because kids don't know. Right. And that's why I do these videos. Right. Um, I'm hoping it helps a lot of kids growing up so that they won't be like I did where I never knew. I never heard about what I had right. growing up. Right. There was nothing. And luckily, we just had gotten a computer so I could go on. <laughs> but there still wasn't that much out there. Everything right. I looked up was always the same thing that I already looked up. Right. Now there's way more information out there. There's support groups where there was none of that when right. you had, when you were uh, diagnosed. Right. So now there's way more stuff, and that's why I think it's a good thing that we're doing the walk. Right. Is so more people can learn about it, especially right. in this area. I think it's important. Okay, well, that was my last question. Okay. Thank you for doing the video with me. I hope it turns out okay. It will. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, please, please don't hesitate to ask. Put them in the comments below or send me a direct message. Um, 
Make sure you share this video with anybody you think it might be helpful to, or if you just enjoyed it, and remember to, to subscribe. I'll have another new video posted next Sunday. Um, so in the meantime, subscribe to this one and watch any others that you think might be helpful. See you guys next time.